Anthology series are always fun to enjoy for their different stories. Many of the best anthology TV series include The Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and Goosebumps. But the best of all anthology series is, without a doubt, Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt originated first as a series of comic books from EC, Entertainment Comics, which lasted for five years and 27 issues, and spawned other horror comics such as The Haunt of Fear, The Vault of Horror, and Shock Suspense Stories. These comics met their premature end thanks to a Senate subcommittee on juvenile delinquency and the establishment of the Comics Code Authority. Think of it as sort of a production code administration for comic books. But that didn't stop influencing future storytellers such as R.L. Stein, writer of Goosebumps, horror novelist Stephen King, and even directors like George A. Romero. In fact, King and Romero paid tribute to these comics with the 1982 film Creepshow. There was even a Tales from the Crypt movie in 1972. But Tales from the Crypt became a phenomenon, thanks to an amazing series that aired on HBO from 1989 to 1996, produced by Superman director Richard Donner, Alien producers David Geiler and Walter Hill, Die Hard producer Joel Silver, and Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis. Thanks to the show being on premium cable, it was not subjected to the strangleholds of standards and practices as other shows on network television. Since I was way too young to watch it when it first aired, I was given a more child-friendly substitute in the form of a Saturday morning cartoon, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, which was my introduction to the Tales from the Crypt concept. Many of these stories, much like The Twilight Zone, Focus on unlikable people getting their comeuppance, but this time in the most grisly and imaginable way. And each episode is hosted by an animatronic talking corpse called the Crypt Keeper. Hi, Mom! <laughs> Featuring a who's who of famous actors, some of them cutting their directing teeth on this show. Now, with 93 episodes, I'm gonna list you 12 my favorites. This is my top 12 favorite episodes of Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Number 12. You Murderer. Based on the story in Shock Suspense Stories number 14, it tells the story of a former criminal turned businessman reminiscing on a set of circumstances that left him dead, but still able to see, hear, and feel everything around him. What makes this episode so unique is that the episode's director, Robert Zemeckis, utilized old archival footage of Humphrey Bogart to make it look as though he was still alive and interacting with the other actors. It's the same technique Zemeckis used in Forrest Gump. Also, it's shot from his point of view, so you only get glimpses of him through a reflection in a mirror. It's very clever. Sure, the effect is primitive by today's standards, but still pretty ballsy approach. Seems that destiny is taking a hand. What was that, Mr. Spinelli? It's destiny that today of all days, uh, you, doll, have come up with a campaign that's going to save this company. Number 11. Carry On Death. Based on the story found in Shock Suspense Stories number 9, it stars Twin Peaks' Kyle MacLachlan as an escaped murderer heading for the Mexican border. He is hunted by a state trooper who ultimately handcuffs him. When he kills the trooper, he has to drag around his corpse since he's handcuffed to him, all the while he's pestered by a vulture. You know, you're really starting to piss me off! All I can say concerning this episode is, you gotta admire this guy's persistence. I, I can't believe it! Mexico! 
a friendly neighbor to the south. I couldn't have done it without you, pal. Oh my God, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> Number 10. My Brother's Keeper. Based on the story found in Shock Suspense Stories in number 16, Timothy and Jonathan Stack play Siamese twins. One is nice, the other just an absolute slime ball. He wants to be separated from his nicer brother, so he does everything he can to make his life a living hell. You son of a bitch. You ruined my one chance at happiness. <laughs> Cuts from you, Frank. How uncivilized. I could go on, but then I'd be ruining the payoff, so I'll just move on. Number 9. The Ventriloquist's Dummy. Based on the story found in Tales from the Crypt number 28, it's about an aspiring ventriloquist who wants to improve his craft, so he seeks out his idol, Don Rickles, he asks what the secret is, and he reveals that he has a Siamese brother on his hand. This is one of the few episodes on the show that was directed by one of my favorite directors, Richard Donner. Nothing else to say except, this is nuts. What are you doing? I'm making an asshole casserole, pal. And you're the main ingredient. Number eight. The Switch. Based on the story found in Tales from the Crypt number 45, it stars William Hickey as a dying bachelor who wants to propose to his crush, played by Kelly Preston. She rejects him due to his age, so he goes to a quack doctor for the sole purpose of switching from an old body to a new. But the girl is so damn picky that anyone would just move on, but not this guy. Remember when I said many actors cut their directing teeth on this show? This is one of those episodes, as it just so happens to be directed by none other than the Terminator himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He even introduces the story, too. What's the matter with you? You want to keep that 90 pound corpse for the rest of your death? Number 7. Television Terror. Based on the story found in The Haunt of Fear, number 17, Morton Downey Jr. plays a tabloid news host investigating a haunted house belonging to a woman who murdered several men for their social securities checks. What makes this episode enjoyable is how much of a sleazeball Morton Downey Jr. plays, and when things start to happen, you feel a great deal of pleasure just watching him get what's coming to him. Horton, can you hear me? We gotta keep you in there. The ratings are too high. Sounds <laughs> cold, I know, but you've gotta have that killer instinct, right? Number six. For crying out loud. Based on the story found in Shock Suspense Stories number 15, it involves a rock promoter planning to run off with all of the donation money that has been raised and accumulated from a series of benefit concerts. Things begin to take a turn when his hearing problem turns out to be his conscience, voiced by the late comedian Sam Kinison. My conscience? I don't have a conscience. Oh no? Then what am I? Talk radio? <laughs> He is then blackmailed by his banker, and he kills her. Soon his conscience begins to torture him to the point of wanting him to confess. The story is kind of similar to The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. Hey, monkey dick! I killed my banker! Well, some of your pants will get the cop! You hear that? Yeah, tell the cop I stuffed the bitch in Donny Osmond's bomb case! What's the matter with you, Queenie? Never made pee-pee next to a psychopath before? All I can say is having Sam Kinison as the voice of your conscience would be absolute L. Hey, didn't you read that label? That stuff's 80% alcohol! Let's burn it! I'd prefer Lewis Black myself. The music's so loud they can't hear you! Then I guess I'll have to speak a little louder! Number five. 
cutting cards. Based on the story found in Tales from the Crypt number 32, a pair of rival gamblers who hate each other with a passion face off in a series of increasingly dangerous and gruesome games in order to see who will leave town when all is said and done. Careful! Only one! <laughs> this episode is directed by 48 Hours director Walter Hill and stars Lance Henriksen and Kevin Teague. It's fun to see two characters who despise each other try to one-up the other in a very brutal way. God damn! Number four. Split Personality. Based on the story found in the Vault of Horror number 30, it features Joe Pesci as a swindler who falls in love with a pair of twins. After learning that they are worth a combined $2 billion, he creates a fictional twin brother of his own so he can trick both twins into dating and marrying him in a plot to steal their combined inheritance. This episode is enjoyable because Joe Pesci is doing what he does best. Oh, too sexy for my hair. Too sexy for this earring. Too sexy. Uh, too sexy for this house. And it's most famous for this infamous internet meme. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Also, check out Joe Pantoliano in a quick cameo. Number three. And all through the house. Based on the story found in the Vault of Horror number 35, Director Robert Zemeckis casts his then-wife as a greedy, philandering housewife who murders her husband, Marshall Bell, for his insurance money. Ain't it always the way? Merry Christmas, you son of a bitch! While trying to dispose of the body, she is attacked by an escaped mental patient dressed as Santa Claus, played by Darkman's Larry Drake. The fact that it's a Christmas episode and the second episode in the series to air is extraordinary. It has enough to leave you on the edge of your seat. Naughty or nice. Number two. Yellow. Based on the story found in Shock Suspense Stories number one, it concerns a soldier in World War I being court-martialed for the death of his former troops during a suicidal attack, he is found guilty and sentenced to death for cowardice in the face of the enemy by his own father. You're a disgrace to your uniform. I never wanted to wear it. Originally intended for another anthology series called Two-Fisted Tales, it is said that Steven Spielberg was to direct this episode. But instead, we got his protege, Robert Zemeckis, instead. Nothing horror-related happens in this episode. In fact, it feels almost like a spiritual sequel to the Stanley Kubrick anti-war epic, Paths of Glory, featuring Kirk Douglas, who appears along with his son Eric in this episode. But unlike Paths of Glory, which focuses on the French army, this episode focuses on the American army. With actors that includes Lance Henriksen and Dan Aykroyd, Yellow is a loving tribute to cinema's most enigmatic directors. It is, in fact, an episode with a runtime of 44 minutes. That's almost an hour. He died like a man. Yes. My son is not Yellow. Now, before I reveal my number one, here are not one, not two, not even three honorable mentions, but three. Four honorable mentions. The Man Who Was Deaf. William Sadler plays judge, jury, and executioner after losing his executioner job at the jail. I find you both guilty of the murder of your former wife, Mr. Corny. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> House of Horror. Three pledges of a fraternity on probation are bullied into going into an abandoned sorority house with a spooky history. Let the punishment fit the crime. 
Catherine O'Hara plays an ambulance-chasing lawyer arrested for having an illegal license plate in a remote town where the court system is really screwed up. Her public defender, Peter McNichols, is no help at all. Oh, what are you crying about? They cut off my nose. <laughs> Dead right. Demi Moore is a gold-digging secretary marrying Jeffrey Tambor as a severely obese man due to a fortune teller telling her that she will inherit his fortune when he dies. Is it just me, or does Jeffrey Tambor's makeup look like Colin Farrell as the Penguin? And my number one favorite episode of Tales from the Crypt is... The Third Pig. By season 7, the episodes were pretty subpar. That is, until the final episode, when they hit you with a cartoon. That's right, the final episode of Tales from the Crypt was a cartoon. But not just any cartoon, no, 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 no. This is a telling of the three little pigs. The big bad wolf kills the first two pigs. The third pig is convicted of the murders in a kangaroo court. Or should I say, a wolf court. His brothers come back to him as ghosts and convinces him to build a Franken-Pig monster. And I thought Itchy and Scratchy was over the top. This episode takes the cake. As gory as it is and as disgusting as it is, it still keeps me laughing hysterically. You can run, but you can't hide. I'll get you damn pigs if it's the last thing I do. You, you, oh, oh what rhymes with you? Uh -huh. I'm not a damn poet. Why does everything always have to rhyme in these things? Ah, I can't help it. No one talks like that. These stupid freaking children trying to sound like a Hallmark card or something. No one talks like that. And so the wolf left without his dinner and angry because he couldn't end his speech on a very good rhyme. I guess you could say they saved the best for last. The Third Pig, my number one favorite episode of Tales from the Crypt. I love this ending. I think it's neat. And I've only one thing to say. Bark the other light meat. Bark. Ooh.